Hey everybody, I got a lot done. And you know what? It's cold out here. It's about 4.30. The temperature is what, 17 degrees, 18 degrees. Humidity is 68%. Whew. Man, it's cold out here. As you can see, the B36 H want list has not changed, unfortunately. <sighs> Keeping it with my little heater on about, about 40 in here, so. Still, it's cold. Hopefully I don't uh, redo things I've already discussed, but I just watched my last video, but I have a tendency to repeat myself, but. You know, last week I cut off, I had the uh, the initial beams here. The uh, first thing I had to do after I realized that those beams weren't long enough because this surface right here was, was convex and my stupid light just went out. This happened in the last video too, I think. It's tricky. Maybe I just don't know how to use the light. Anyways, I quickly realized that these weren't long enough because this surface, because I it was years ago when I built it, it was actually bowed out a little bit. So I had to go in from the other side by deriveting the skin and install these uh, horizontal beams. So that straightened that all out. I wish, I wish I knew what an airplane looked like when I did these or, or had a better idea. I was, I was looking at the inside of a B-17. It's, they're pretty close, but they're a little bit different than what's found on the B-36. These are, these are a little bit wider, but it is what it is. You can see the wall, if you saw the side, the main bulkhead, how it runs down there to the side, or the Longeron frame, whatever you want to call it. But with that fixed, I was able to install the, uh, the Curtis Electric propeller synchronizer. It's on shock mounts, old shock mounts that are pretty loose, but it's, it is firmly in there. I actually had to redo this. I initially thought that these beams were a total of eight inches apart. I didn't follow my own advice where they're supposed to be five and a quarter. So that was fun. Unfortunately, I don't have my light with me, so you can't, you can't see the details, but they are up there. After I got that done, I then moved on to reattaching the flight deck table, which consists of two lateral beams that run down there. They are now attached permanently to the, uh, the fuselage side. I have to reinstall that guy right there. Then I moved down to here and straighten these out a little bit in preparation to mount what I've been working on today. There went my light. I think it's like a safety feature because it's like three trillion lumen. If you were to like accidentally turn it on, it would blind you. So I think there's a delay. It's, it's weird. I don't like it, but it's nice. Uh, I had to reverse engineer this and then go back and build it forward and reverse it again. But this guy was really tricky. Um, he's a flat piece right there with two flanges on either side where these, um, these flush rivets are. So I had to build this. I had to take everything apart and derivet what I had up here, which was just the initial piece. So I could go and I could do all the riveting and I made the mount for the handrail. And I went ahead and incorporated the um, quarter turn fasteners here and here because this is where the fuse panel is going to be for the flight engineer with his main power switch right there and uh, indicator. I'm going to put uh, posts up in the uh, pictures in the post or the community section. I don't think it's called the community section anymore, but it's the just the posts. But that's where I put my in progress pictures at but 
I got impatient. I thought I could bend this with, with a nice curved surface behind it, but I failed, but it doesn't matter because I, I had to have this to model this area for a frame of reference. But it's, it's quite nice. Um, I don't want to sit here and explain everything to you guys. There's a lot that went into all this, let me tell you. My hand's getting cold. I can barely hold the phone. It's, I don't really think that there's anything else. Uh, the table is level both longitudinally and or longitudinally and laterally, hmm. which is a really good thing. Ah. Uh, this is a big blind area right here. I can't see any of this in any of the pictures I have of the real aircraft. I know there's a lot of covering. I, I call them fairings, but they're not fairings. They go down there. But I do know that there's that. I know that there's that. And I know that that's there because I can see the rivet line. And I can also see where it riveted to the back of the main frame here. So it's just a matter of getting the, the big fuse board here and then whatever needs to be there, which I'll determine that. It only takes a few pictures of some rivets and about five hours of studying to figure it out. And then I go back and realize I did it wrong. Uh, I don't know if I posted a picture, but I had a, before I had all this installed without the, um, the brace, this is what's holding it up and that over there. I had a, a 45 pound weight sitting right here on the cantilever and it supported, this was able to support that. So that was pretty cool. There is not a lot about the flight engineer station that I need to get done now that I've got all this. Just, just to build this huge box back here and the braces and the control line crap. And it's done. Ain't gonna happen tomorrow though, but we're getting there. Trying to replace the pop rivets with solid rivets wherever it's practical. There's places I simply cannot reach, but it is what it is. You can't have everything. You can even see that beam up there. You can't see it, but there's gauges up there. That fourth, right there's the frame. The, the top longitudinal, it goes right exactly where it is. It's absolutely perfect. It's gonna be nice when I can get that, that handrail properly bent and get that uh, 90 degree in there. It's cold. I'll see y'all next time.